everybody, hope you're okay. Um, I thought I would read for us today and today I'm going to read Man on the Moon, A Day in the Life of Bob. And this is Bob on the front, ready to take his journey to the moon. Man on the Moon, A Day in the Life of Bob. This is Bob. Perhaps you've heard people talk of him. You may know him better as the man on the moon. And there he is, the man on the moon. This is where Bob lives. Every morning he rises at six o'clock. He has a cup of tea and two eggs for breakfast before leaving for the rocket launch pad. On the way, he stops to buy a newspaper and some chocolate toffees. He's on his way to work on the moon. So here he is cycling up to his rocket. By eight o'clock Bob arrives at the launch pad, changes into his special man on the moon suit and boards his fantastic rocket ship. He must make sure he leaves by a quarter to nine otherwise he wouldn't make it to the moon by nine o'clock. On the way he reads the newspaper and does the crossword. And you can see him getting changed here and here he is in his rocket, and you may not be able to see, but I think he's doing his crossword. Bob starts work. His job as man on the moon is very important. He has to keep the moon clean and tidy. Quite often, astronauts drop sweet packets and cans. Some people say that the aliens are responsible for much of the rubbish, but Bob knows that this is not true. There's no such thing as aliens. I'm not sure, look, we've got three little characters here who've come to say hello. I think they might be some aliens. <gasps> look, there they are. By 12.30, it's time to eat. Bob goes to his rocket ship to fetch his lunchbox. This usually contains two sandwiches, either cheese or peanut butter, an apple and some chocolate-covered nuts. Sometimes he meets his friends for a picnic. It's his two best friends, his two best friends, are Billy, the man on Mars, and Sam, the man on Saturn. They talk about the stars and tell jokes. So here he is, here's Bob and his two friends, and the picnic lunch, and I wonder who this is helping themselves to the picnic lunch. After lunch, tourist spaceships start arriving from Earth. It's a part of Bob's job to entertain them and give them something to photograph. So he does somersaults, handstands and especially high moon jumps. Sometimes he performs for as long as two hours and is left quite out of puff. And here he is doing a lovely routine. Occasionally the tourist spaceships will land on the moon. When they do, Bob gives them a guided tour and a speech. He tells them lots of facts, such as how many craters the moon has, or how long it takes to walk around it on stilts. Sometimes people ask him about aliens, and Bob explains patiently that there aren't any. Afterwards, Bob opens a small souvenir stand selling postcards, pencils, mugs, and small plastic moon models. By 4.30, all visitors must leave the moon. Bob looks around to see that everyone has left. He checks inside any big craters in case anyone has fallen in, but there's never anyone in there. I wonder if perhaps Bob can't see all the way to the bottom, because I think he might have some friends at the bottom. The working day is nearly over. It's time to check everything is all in order before leaving for the night. Bob packs away his equipment and any unsold souvenirs into his rocket. He switches on the moon's nightlight before jetting off towards Earth. By this time he is very tired, but he still has time to keep his wits about him while flying the rocket. And here he is flying his rocket. As he reaches Earth, it's about five o'clock. The rush hour is in full swing with everyone leaving work and going home, just like Bob. At 
home, Bob is just like anyone else. First, he has a long bath. Moon work can make you very grubby, as sometimes the dust can get inside your suit. Then he goes to bed with a mug of cocoa. He sleeps soundly, bathed in moonbeams, very happy to be the man on the moon. And aliens? Well, Bob would know if there were any.